Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is while you're watching this. And today's kit review is going to be on the Krieger equipment, such as the 10 litre tail pack that I have on the back of the Hornet and most of my other bikes as well, and the OS 6s which I have on my trusty Himalayan parked up behind it. I've got quite a lot of Krieger bags in different sizes from the US 5, the mentioned US 10, US 20, the R8 8 litre tail pack, the R20 rucksack, and the hydration pack which fits inside the R20 rucksack. However, you'll have noticed already that these are all black. And uh, as with the cool cover, black on black isn't so good, so it's time to move out the garage into the house, which I'll probably call a studio at some point, and uh, have a look at these on something that gives a bit more contrast. And with a bit of contrast, we can have a look at the US 5, 10 and 20 litre tail packs. They all follow the same basic format. You have a couple of uh, pinch closures to so get to the main compartment. The white line is actually removable if you uh, need to give the outer bag a wash, but don't wash the inner one. This is actually the waterproof part of it. You'll see that there's a mesh pocket underneath and you have a zipped pocket on top as well to keep your bits of rag in. Simply roll it up, clip together and you have a nice waterproof pouch. The fixings are a little bit faffy, they used to be a lot more convenient for me than this but what you have now is a, a small piece that uh, on the 5 can actually be fixed to the bike with the two fixings here. I'll just move it a little bit closer so hopefully you can see those, the two holes. And uh, these were originally designed for use on off-road bikes, hence the, uh, the whole position for the holes to drill through the uh, tail uh, mudguards, the rear mudguards. Then what you would do, <coughs> once you've uh, fixed that to your bike, if that's what you want to do, is simply hook on the tail pack like so using some very sturdy aluminium fixes that you can see here, little hooks. Um, problem with this is that if you don't ride a dirt bike you do need to strap this down quite tightly and um, you need to find somewhere to fit all this. The strap's quite easy to work, again it's black on black so not easy to see but you just pull down the uh, tail through the buckle, there's a couple of clips to keep it all nice and snug. The 10 litres are a little bit different on the closing for the main pocket in that you get another snap which uh, goes over the top to keep the roll pocket closed. Again, not terribly easy to see when it's black on black. You get the same mesh pocket, the same zip pocket in the side, and uh, the fixings are a little bit different. You have some smaller fixings with the metal clip on the end, and there's four of these, so you have one in each one. Then the idea is that you loop a separate piece through an appropriate part of your bike, then tighten it all up, this would be under the rear seat usually, and then with the hook there which can stay flat under your, hanging out from under your seat or be tucked away under the seat, you simply connect the aluminium buckle to it. Personally, I'm not a great fan of these. My bikes don't have anything suitable under the seat and I usually leave mine on the back rack. So they are not as good as I find as the original ones, which were a single piece of webbing that you looped under. And I did prefer those, but most people don't. So Krieger, I've obviously gone with the popular vote on this one. And the 20 litre is the same you get even more capacity. The, this time the mesh underside container is zipped rather than velcroed. You still get the zipped container on the top that I'm disappearing my hand into and um, of course 
the large main compartment again has the white inner liner which is the waterproof bit which you can take out wash the outer if it gets too mucky and uh, put back in and keeps it all nice and waterproof the OS 6's are very like a slightly smaller US 10 they have the more up-to-date fixings with the aluminium hooks and the belt that we saw on the US 5 uh, the hooks are black which is why I've not taken them off the bike and brought them up here because obviously black on black not the greatest thing you can see moving on to the R8 belt pack it's uh, a variation on the smaller R3 but this one does have two pockets the smaller one of which again has the roll top and the waterproof white lining the larger one has a zip closure rather than a roll closure which I'll try and demonstrate here black on black always good for contrast and you get a tool pouch with it which does fit very nicely in the larger pocket quite a largeable tool pouch if you're uh, off-roading and like carrying tools around with you I've never used this to be honest it just sits uh, up on a shelf I use this for carrying video cameras, stills cameras and other things when I'm doing filming and bits and pieces off the bike. You also get a, a zipped pouch here which is very good for carrying batteries and memory cards and under the smaller one as well as the waterproof compartment you will have, also have a small zipped compartment as well which you can keep other bits and pieces in. It has a really nice little mechanism for adjustment here. You just uh, set your um, main buckle to your waist and then by pulling this to and fro you actually can lengthen and shorten the main part of the buckle. So you put it on you with this in the loose position then just pull it to tighten it up when it's on and it does keep it nice and snug. The only thing that I don't like about this is the closing. Uh, the fastening sorry, around your waist. It's a plastic um, robust looking and so far it's um, seen me um, riding with it but it, I say it's plastic, it's a pinch clip, it is very very robust. Um, I've not had any problems but I'm not completely full of confidence with it with riding with camera equipment. The roll closure is slightly different on this one which I'll try to demonstrate you roll it closed and clip it to itself and then with the flap closed you engage another clip which hopefully you can see there. The main compartment does have two clips on it and for a bit of contrast they are a, a sort of creamy, creamy beigey colour the adjustment straps one thing though, if you are riding with anything solid in either of these pockets, try to make sure that you get the dividing piece over the small of your back. Because what you don't want to do is have an accident, um, especially off-roading, end up flat on your back and have a load of tools sticking in it. A, uh, a screwdriver to the kidney isn't the nicest thing in the world you're going to have. So just bear that in mind, maybe put something extra padding in here. It is well padded, it is comfortable for all day use. Finally, we come on to one of the first Krieger items that I bought, which is the R20 rucksack. It's good, it's very, very good. I've got a fair bit of stuff stuffed in here at the moment. A fair bit of stuff being a pair of leather trousers. I'll explain why they're in there in a moment. You get a small pouch as you see my hand disappearing into here which so far I've found to be waterproof and the good thing is that unlike a lot of rucksacks when you do it up and put the uh, clips in place pulling these tight will actually stop any of this flapping about on your back it keeps it all really snug so you can open it up to your full 20 litres capacity or pull it really really tight against your back if you're only carrying a few items It's very robust, unfortunately um, this had to happen to it um, because I was wearing it when I was knocked off my bike and a paramedic scissors are even tougher 
than the Krieger. I have got another one of these, so don't worry, I still use them. The fastening, again it's trying to see black on black, is a, a variation on a pinch clip, but it's a, a round buckle which gives you quite a lot, if I can get it into frame, quite a lot of movement. Maybe I should have cut the other side as well, I've got the paramedic too. So it does fit very nicely against your chest. As advertised, all the weight inside the rucksack doesn't go onto your shoulders, it goes across your chest. I haven't got any of the ones with the double fixings on the front of these rucksacks, such as the 25 and upwards. So you do notice you've got a little bit of pressure there, but it's not on your shoulders. Uh, beats me how they do it, to be honest, because I would have thought that no matter how you try and arrange this, you're still going to be a bit, get a bit of pressure on your shoulders. You also get a waist belt. Um, unfortunately, again, the victim of the paramedic chopping bits of uh, kit off me to uh, try and sort me out when I had a broken arm and a broken leg. And um, they fit into the buckles either side and uh, it does secure it around your waist. You can take them off, I prefer to leave mine on for just a little bit of extra security. You can't really w ride this with your chest buckle undone. I've done it for about 200 yards uh, because I've uh, pushed it but not pushed it home fully and you do notice it doesn't feel fully secured. What you can fit inside and luckily has got a bit more contrast is a drinks bladder. This is the Krieger one they're on the, god blimey, I don't know how many marks they're on now since I bought this because it's a, uh, uh, one of the first uh, packs that they did. It's actually a Hydro Pack 2, got Krieger's logo all over it and uh, it's really good. It's, you can carry water in this obviously or whatever else you want to drink. Water I'd recommend being the best. Fruit juices and things, they're not going to be too happy after being sat in the sun for a bit. Uh, might get a bit whiffy in here. I've only ever used water. Um, I've what I tend, <clears throat> I've only ever used water. What I tend to do if it's a really hot day is fill it about a third full of water and chuck it in the freezer overnight to make a nice block of ice. Then fill the rest full of water. Um, it doesn't leak so far. Um, you get a really nice little closing mechanism on it and uh, you can turn this inside out when you've had water in it all day and you want to give it a drain out and a clean so you can turn the whole thing inside out. You fill it full of ice, freeze it, fill it full of water then simply fold it over and with the sealing piece which I'm probably trying to put on, oh no I got it the right way slide that over getting rid of the rucksack for a moment you have the hose that comes uh, with this pack. It has a, a nice dry break connector on the bottom. So once you've filled it full of water, you connect that up. Um, a quick top tip when I said about filling these uh, with about a litre of water and freezing them, try and keep this end a little bit upright so you don't freeze water in here, otherwise you're never gonna get a drink until it starts to melt. The upper piece, they've changed the design of these now. The original one has a nice little bite on it, you pull it out, you may have heard the click there and simply bite down, simply bite down and suck and you get water out. The bit in the hose will get warm on a hot day, not a lot you can do about that. But the actual mouthpiece is very nice, very comfortable. One thing to remember is always put this out the left hand side of the rucksack. The reason being is that if you put it out of the right hand side, you've got throttle and brake on that side, you're currently both faffing about a bit on the left hand side, on your clutch arm, so it's a lot easier to get out and put in your mouth to get a drink. They fit up inside helmets quite nicely. Um, I just leave mine tucked under the shoulder strap of the rucksack. You've uh, also got some Velcro on it um, here, so you can Velcro it if you put a little bit of Velcro on the rucksack. So, to sum up, is it any good? Definitely yes. Um, if I don't have under seat storage, I have a Krieger pack on the bike. I regularly ride 15 to 20,000 miles a year. 
all weathers apart from snow and ice and this kit has never let me down. The only thing I don't really like about it um, from a uh, kit point of view is the fact that the fixings have changed so that you don't get the belts anymore that are really nice for just putting onto a back rack. You get the uh, various attachments points. Obviously they're more popular so that's why Krieger make them but with an inch thick piece of or an inch wide rather piece of webbing you can make your own straps up just reuse the um, clips that come with it and you can make them up quite easily cut these uh, strips diagonally burn the ends over with a fag lighter to stop them fraying and you've done yourself a good job you can also stitch them up a little bit if you want to uh, stop the uh, catches coming completely off the end. The big downside for a lot of people is going to be the price. They are not cheap. Nothing I've shown you here is under 50 quid. The rucksack and the belt are about 140 quid from memory and um, yeah they are quite an investment. The pack on the Hornet here I have owned for over 10 years now easily. I think it's probably closer to 14 years and I've never had a problem with it. They're modular, they're flexible, they're tough. The only thing that's beaten anything of mine as with the aforementioned paramedics trauma shears. Um, the reason I had the leather trousers in there is they were the ones that were cut off me as well, so they're a bit of a souvenir. Overall, about 95%. The straps on the more modern stuff are very slight let down, but they are very, very good bits of kit and I highly recommend them. So to see what you can get into a Krieger kit, have a look at this. This is what I put into a 10 litre as I that I carry every day on the bike. And um, I'll see you in the next review.